of those licks where you really have to get it right from the first note, all this. You can't recover from that and start playing it right from the 17th note. I only know that lick from this note. <laughs> Try and play it from anywhere else, it all ends in tears. I speak from experience. Um, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything more helpful I can tell you about Corn for Damps. Um, I'm really probably here more to play rather than to do the sales pitch. I'm guessing that's why you guys are here as well. But just quickly, uh, I have to sell these amps in California every January. Uh, it's a good place to be in January. <laughs> and, uh, the weather is surprisingly clement. And uh, I meet a lot of people there. Who, maybe they're doctors or lawyers or something like that. And every three months or so, they'll treat themselves to the newest boutique amp. And maybe they still sound terrible. So three months later, they assume it's the amp's fault. They'll uh, go back to their favorite boutique shop. So it's not giving me that Robin Ford tone. Obviously, what I need to do is buy a more expensive amp. And, uh, these people normally have a Cornford at some point in their amp odyssey, in their quest for the perfect tone. Of course, they never get the perfect tone because they're a doctor or a lawyer and they get maybe half an hour a month yeah. actually to play the Layla lick in their, in their cellar or whatever. And, uh, hopefully everyone here knows that the truth is largely that tone is in your fingers and you can't just throw money at the problem like that and expect it to go away. Um, but those, those players who aren't necessarily that great but love throwing money around, sometimes they hate these amps. And that's the same reason I love these amps. Um, whatever you put in, that's what you get out. Uh, you could have 10 different players plug in, well, play this guitar through that amp without touching any knobs. Everyone will sound different. <laughs> All right, I think that's good. I think that if you think about what that's called, it's an amplifier. You put yeah. things in, this box is meant to amplify whatever you put in there. Uh, I think some amps will colour your tone more or force more of the personality of the amp onto what you're doing. And that works fine for a certain kind of player. For me, these feel like vintage amps. They feel like the amps I was playing when I was a kid. Sort of grotty old Marshalls and the likes, where you have to turn everything up to 11 and there's still not quite enough gain. There's angry neighbours at the door. These feel like an old amp, but they really do go up to 11. Um, so anyone who's curious about Cornfords, that's probably the right reason to be curious about it. If you want an amp that's really responsive to different guitars, different ways you can hit a string, um, I've always been a fan of seeing how many different ways you can play one note, how many sounds you can get just with limited gear. Obviously this is not the cheapest amp in the world, this is not the cheapest guitar in the world, but there's nothing in between. Um, I really love the idea that you can... says 10 right now, it's the pickup of death at the back, but you can still hear a difference between me playing and um, So, I, to summarise, they're good. <laughs> good amps. Uh, 